Hi, welcome to the channel, I'm Amanda and we are here today to talk about 10 things I regret buying and I can easily declutter today. Hopefully this will inspire you to find things around your house that you can get rid of now. The first thing that I regret buying is this tray and the reason for that is because it sits over there on one of my tables and it just collects junk. I think that if the table didn't have this tray, it wouldn't collect the junk. It's got these batteries in it that could go in the drawer that's actually made for batteries to go into. It has instructions for cubes that my child likes to play with, a random backing to a controller, my son's watch, this nail file and money. And it does collect other things throughout the day too and the weeks. So I think that I'm gonna just put things where they should go and get rid of this tray or use it for something else. So the next thing that I regret is bags. These bags. I have two of these tote bags that I didn't pay for and I've just kept them because they were free. But I never use them. So this is a sauce train that greens all over. I don't know. I don't even know where I got this. I can't remember. I think Susan may have given it as it or I got it from a present or something like that. But I don't need tote bags. I use bags for life when I go shopping and things. I think they're much better because they've got a lot more space in them and I don't need this. And then this one is one that I got for free from the Edinburgh Art Shop and I like the colour and I like the design, I just don't use it. I've had it for over a year now and I have never used this once. So I think it's safe to say that I don't need tote bags. I also have handbags and backpacks that I think I regret too. This was £60 I think. Or maybe even more expensive than that. It's Harris Tweed. It's a very good brand uh, in Scotland here and it is a really lovely bag. I really like it but it's too small for what I like to take with me places. This is the bag that I use the most. It's from uh, Sports Direct. It's a cheap one. I really like it. It's big enough for all my art supplies or gym equipment or anything that I need to take with me bottles of water when I'm going on adventures and stuff like that, picnics. It's just a really good bag and it's a good size. This bag I bought because I was going to a wedding and I thought that I needed a black bag to go with my black dress. Well, it was actually navy, but I didn't feel like I could wear this bag because it just wasn't formal enough and I felt like I needed a formal bag. I have used this once in the two and a half years that I've had it. I've used this quite a fair bit but I used that one the most and technically I could get rid of both of these bags and just take that one wherever I go but there is going to be an occasion that calls for this bag and this bag so I think I should just put it away out of my immediate uh, my immediate situation. I think I might actually try and use this bag a lot more just because it is a good bag and I really like it and I like the style as well uh, and the colour of it and stuff so I think I am gonna use this bag more now that I have my pochet box for art supplies to take with me so as long as my water bottle and my headphones fit in this bag comfortably which they do I think I'm gonna use this bag. It's got a mark on it. I hope I can get that, get rid of that. But yes, I like this. I think this is my style and I want to envision myself with this bag. So I'm gonna use this one. If I never use this one again, then I'm just gonna get rid of this one. And this one will hide in the closet in case of a rare occasion that I need to go out somewhere and be a little bit more classy. Next up is candles. So I bought this candle, a mulled wine candle, five years ago maybe? 
Obviously it's for Christmas time. I haven't used it. It's still pretty full. So I'm guessing that I'm never probably going to use this candle. And this one I think I bought maybe two summers ago. Or two springs ago. So I've bought two candles and I haven't used them. I've also had other candles that I've thrown out that I know for a fact that I'm not going to use. Uh, tea light candles and other ones like this. I think three or four of them have been discarded because they got so gross that I couldn't light them again. These ones do have dust in them as well. So I don't know. I don't know how you're ha meant to handle burning dust. And I also don't think the wick for this one works anymore. Okay, I got it to work. Now I'm thinking, should I actually get rid of it? I don't know. Help. I'm going to let it burn. I actually really like this candle, but I always forget to light candles. I don't know why. Just something that I don't have the habit of. I think a lot of people ha grow the habit of lighting a candle every night or every time they go for a bath or something like that. So um, I I'm going to try and light these candles because I do enjoy them, but I also regret buying them. So if I do not use up these candles within... Well, I'm going to say if I don't light the candle regularly in the next month, then, and I mean regularly as in two or three times a week, I am going to dispose of these candles or just give them away to somebody else. This is the next thing that I regret buying, which is sandwich tins. And I've bought two of them. I have two cake tins that are exactly the same in diameter than these. So I don't need these because all I would need to do is put the batter in just as much as I would put in this pan and then I would have the sandwich cake rather than having to buy a specific tin for the sandwich cake. So these are just an extra thing that I don't need. So I'm going to get rid of them and uh, we're going to see how we go with just the other cake tins that are higher up that you can use for sandwiches or sandwich size and normal cake size too. This is interesting. We all love a kitchen gadget. This was actually um, something that my mum told me that I should get because I would enjoy it <laughs> and I do not. I actually hate it. It's quite cheap and nasty. It doesn't really work very well. It's one of those things where you can get all these attachments and it slices things and it dices things and it grates things and um, you just, you know, you put your fruit in here or your vegetable in here and you close that and it makes it all fall out and it's convenient and all that stuff. I have used this maybe three or four times when I first got it and I was like, this is great. And then one of the attachments, my favourite one that I had, broke. It was actually the a uh, smaller one of these and this is gross as well like really hard to clean I don't think I think I can do everything that I need to do in the kitchen with a knife so I don't need this it was 15 pounds as well I think the only thing I actually like about it it comes with all these two actually I like I like this I don't even know what this is for I'm thinking it's for like an egg I think it's an egg white separator maybe I don't separate my egg whites, I just eat them both. And then this, which I really do actually like. I like this um, peeler. It's actually a decent peeler. Not that I peel too much. And I like this basket because it has slits in it and I can put all my fruit in here and wash my fruit really effectively in this basket. So I think I'm gonna dump the actual thing, this, and the attachments, and maybe keep this and the basket and the peeler. Don't be afraid to get rid of things that just don't work and take them apart and keep the things that do work. Like I could easily just sell this again full price or close to. Uh, no actually I can't because it's a bit mangled already but I could give this away to somebody and somebody else would enjoy it. But I also enjoy the two compartments and I think they're worth £15. Like this acrylic bin is probably on its own about £8 anyway from Amazon and then this basket is just like probably about two or three pounds anyway. So I think that, you know, pros and cons, weigh in it. I think that I can get away with uh, getting rid of these junky bits that I don't use. 
I'm keeping the things that I do. Right, I have no idea what number we're on, but I will maybe put them up on the screen with some editing tricks. But these three things, this and this and this kind of go together. So I bought these first because I really hate how my other half, I love him, but my other half eats cereal and he will open the cereal box in the most aggressive way. There will be no using of tabs in this house. And then he doesn't ravel up the plastic part to keep the cereal safe for longer. So the cereal goes stale quite quickly. So I thought I would buy these to protect them. Now, these are very, very cheap boxes. They are supposed to be for cereal. And to be honest, I have never used them for cereal apart from these porridge oats here but we'll get to that in a sec. So I don't know how they fare with cereal, but as for things like sugar and flour and things like that, baking products, they do not do well. The baking products will go off really quickly in these. And I think it's just because of this part. It, it's not airtight. I do not like these. I've had one empty for about a year and a half, maybe more. And I've had one full of porridge oats for about six months. This is how much I have eaten of the porridge oats because I don't like porridge. So I think I'm going to get rid of the porridge and the box because we don't like porridge in this house. Nobody eats it. What's the point in having it? I bought it because I thought that I could be a good a good thing for my son to eat because he struggles to eat things that are good for him. <laughs> I think all kids do, but particularly breakfasts. It's really hard to find a breakfast that Kaden likes. He will not eat cereal, he'll not eat toast, he'll not eat anything like that. He usually just eats. I don't know what he eats actually because he goes to breakfast club. I'm pretty sure he's not eating breakfast at all. Uh, maybe a yogurt or a sausage roll. I think he eats sausage rolls. Um, he will eat pancakes if you force him, but he just isn't a breakfast person. So the fact that I bought these to try and get him to eat more healthily uh, and he doesn't eat it, it's, it's not gonna, he's not gonna change. I was the same, I was quite fussy when I was small, um, but now I like things that I used to not like back then. So maybe he will in the future like porridge, but I can't force him to like it. So I am not gonna force him <laughs> to like it. I'm just gonna get rid of it and say that it was a mistake. I did say that I like ready brick, but I know for a fact that it's really not good for me. Not this maybe on its own, but I really like to put sugar in this, a lot of sugar. So I have decided not to eat it anymore. But I do like this container. This one's my favourite container. I think I'm going to just get rid of the ready brick. It's been in here for ages anyway. It's probably out of date. I'm going to get rid of the ready brick and I'm going to fill this up with crunchy nut or a genetic cereal that all of us like so that we can actually get through a bit and keep the container too. I left the big boy for the middle of the video. This is a, I think people call it a Keurig. We call it a coffee machine, I guess. It's a filtered coffee machine. <clears throat> it makes filtered coffee. So you get the, the grounded coffee, you put it in the top, you boil it, it comes through and fills up a pot, which we do not have anymore because it broke. I dropped it and there's a big crack in it. So I haven't replaced it. And to be honest, I don't really want to because this is too bulky. I mean, it's really pretty. But it's too bulky, I don't like it. I like the convenience of boiling a kettle or I could get the filtered, filtered coffee and pour over the kettle water into the um, filter, into the cup. So this is basically just a waste of money and space. So I'm gonna get rid of it. I have had it in my cupboard for about three months now. Feeling really guilty about not using it, but we both, both Matt and I have been preferring the instant coffee recently. So we've been using that and then I think once we move out and get a house that we enjoy and find a place for it, uh, we will buy an actual like coffee bean machine maker thing. So this is, I mean, it's time for it to go. I'm gonna see if I can donate it to somebody that wouldn't mind buying an extra Keurig for it. Now the last two or three things that I've got to talk about is art related, but I think that you should hang around because I do think that this is relevant to other people even if you don't like art stuff. This is more about hobbies and interests and they all run along the same lines but I think that it's important to talk about this kind of thing. So if you have a hobby, usually you do like to stock up on supplies 
for that hobby, whether it be guitar, you get a guitar and maybe you want to try electric guitar and you have an acoustic guitar and then maybe you want to try a different brand so you get another guitar and then you don't know what kind of pick you like because there are thin ones and there's thick ones and there's all sorts of different types of picks made of metal and made of plastic so you get a lot of picks. It's the same with art and a lot of other hobbies too and I am no, I'm not an angel when it comes to buying things that I don't need to do with my hobby. Now to really drive the point home I could show you a massive pile of sketchbooks that I have but I've just brought two just to show you that uh, I have made a mistake by buying a bunch of sketchbooks that I do not need yet. I know for a fact that I'll probably need these in the future, but I have a lot of empty sketchbooks that are just waiting and taunting and hoping to be filled one day. And I know for a fact that maybe I have actually bought too many sketchbooks and I'll never get through them in a lifetime. And also, what do I do after I've filled up the sketchbook? Do I keep them? Do I rip them apart and put them into one big sketchbook? Do I sell them or donate them? Do I put them in the bin? Like, what do I do with them? So I have a bunch of sketchbooks that are just waiting to be filled up and they do cause me anxiety and regret because I look in my cupboard almost every day and I'm like I have a bunch of sketchbooks that I have not even started yet and I need to fill them up um, and it's kind of overwhelming makes me not even want to fill the ones up that I have already because I just want to rush through all of the sketchbooks so that I can have zero sketchbooks that I need to fill and then go out and buy myself uh, a new sketchbook to fill in. So if you are a budding artist or your friends or family members are wanting to get into art, I do want to maybe encourage you to buy them or encourage them to buy themselves one sketchbook, fill it up and then treat themselves to a new sketchbook once they're finished rather than just hoarding onto all the sketchbooks and also to do a little bit of research, maybe see what other artists like the best and try those first. Obviously everybody's different and everybody will prefer something else, but um, yeah, I didn't mean for this to turn into a how to buy a sketchbook video, but um, I do think that it does count towards minimalism and not going out of your way to buy a bunch of things that you know that you're not gonna need in the near future. You might need this, 10 years from now, but you probably will not need it in the next year or so. This is my tub of coloured pencils and uh, Neo Colour 2s. If you don't know what Neo Colour 2s are, they are like crayons that uh, are water soluble. And before I had a massive pouch thing, like it was like a CD case almost, like a, it was a huge case of these. I had 76 Prismacolors, 120 Polychromos and roughly around 40 Luminance pencils. I had a bunch of macros as well. I had 72 macro refined pencils. I had a bunch of coloured pencils but I decided to pare them down to this and even this feels like too much. I just have maybe one or two of each colour now and they can fit in here and I think that it's important not to go overboard and just buy every single colour. I don't know how else this will relate to other things but just basically even though it's slightly different it doesn't mean that it's gonna give you satisfaction. For example I have uh, a warm grey here, this is a cool grey Sorry, this is a cool grey and then I've got a neutral grey as well and yes these do do slightly different things and make slightly different colours but really all I would probably need is one and actually I'm picking out a little bit more. I've got another grey there too. So yeah I don't need four greys but I'm always like oh I've got to have them. In fact I have a dark and a light of each colour too. So. I don't need every single colour and I don't need every single shade of each colour either and I think that we don't need every single, I don't know, ribbon colour or every single button or every single needle, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is important to kind of experiment and know what you like but to keep it all, it is overwhelming. I didn't really want to use my coloured pencils because I had too much to choose from. Now I have this little pot, I can easily pick up a pencil, see exactly what colour it is, colour it in, 
put it back, pick up another one, you know, it's simple to see what's there, grab it, use it. Whereas before I was like, oh, I don't know what colour I want, like what colour, this is, do I want this, do I want that, it's slightly darker, or oh, that one's slightly more vibrant, this one's slightly more saturated, you know, it's like, it's too much. Our brains like simplicity and if we have too much to choose from, we're probably going to not do it. It's the same with sketchbooks. I had too many sketchbooks to fill up, so I didn't want to do anything in my sketchbooks at all. And on those same lines as well, I have a bunch of different mediums too. I have watercolours, pastels, wash, oil, I have a bunch of different, I even have inks as well, coloured pencils, all that stuff. I have a bunch of mediums and I am overwhelmed by the choice. Do I want to use watercolours today? Do I want to use oil today? Do I want to use gouache today? Well, if I want to use oil, that means I have to bring out my easel. That means I have to prep the canvas. That means I have to bring out the water and prep the paints and wash the brushes afterwards and clean up. If I want to use watercolour, I just drag it out and start painting and it's fine. But then there is the problem that it warps a little bit and puddles and I don't want to have to deal with waiting for it to dry. Um, I do like pastels but they are very <laughs> chalky and dirty and I don't want to deal with the cleanup either. I really like gouache but can I be bothered squeezing out the tubes to find the colour that I want and mix it and make sure that everything's perfect and that I don't disturb the layers underneath? These are all questions that I ask myself before I choose what medium I want to use. If I only had one single medium, that would be the only one that I would be able to use. And therefore, I probably wouldn't ask the questions, do I need to, or do I want to, or can I be bothered? I would just say, I fancy making art today, I'm gonna use it, and then I would use it. I don't understand why I keep all of these mediums thinking that I'm gonna use them and I end up not using any of them at all. It's, again, the same with the notebooks. I'm not going to use all of them because it's too crippling. Our brains like simplicity. Our brains like to be able to decide quickly and easily. It doesn't like to ask all these questions and get overwhelmed with the answers. It just likes a yes, a no. <laughs> I want to do this, I'm going to do this. And I have noticed since putting my acrylics and a bunch of other supplies in a box where I would be like, if I don't use this in six months or to a year, then I'm gonna get rid of it. I have noticed that I have been wanting to do art more, but I'm still confused on what I want to use. Do I wanna use this, 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 or that? And I think that maybe I'm gonna try for a little bit to put all of my mediums apart from one in a box to see if I do art more often. And I will pick that back up with you and discuss that with you as well if you wanna find that out and see if putting away the decisions helps me make art more. The problem is it's like, what do I choose? Do I choose gouache? Do I choose watercolor? But I think that maybe with something like this, hobbies in particular, especially art, I think that maybe putting away these supplies out of reach, out of sight, out of mind might be a good idea and just say you're going to use this one supply for three months, six months, however long, and then you swap them out. That might be a good way to see if you want to use the items more and to figure out what ones you like the best. So. Maybe I should make a video on my art channel about this. But yeah, that's basically all of the things that I regret buying and that I'm gonna try and get rid of. Again, I will be experimenting with things before I get rid of them. Don't worry too much about things. If you feel like you can't get rid of it yet, just experiment, put it in a box, put it away, put it in your garage, in your basement, at your mum's house, somewhere where you can't see it. I put everything under Caden's bed because he has a raised up bed. So I put everything under there, out of sight, out of mind, so that I can test to see if I'm going to use it or not. And then just play with it and then that means you're not making a big commitment, you're not 
gonna be scared that you're gonna make a mistake because you can easily go in and get it. But do challenge yourself and test yourself to see if you can manage without it for a good chunk of time before you go in there and drag it out. Oh my goodness, I have a sore back from sitting up so straight. <laughs> And making this formal video so thank you so much for watching i hope this inspired you in some way and i will see you in my next video bye